It seems K-pop has taken over the world. What was first a huge market in Asia has now gone worldwide with bands going on world tours and selling out some of the biggest arenas there are. It's no secret fans of K-pop are diehards, but do they really know what goes on behind the scenes? We're about to break it down and tell you the top 10 shocking truths about K-pop you won't believe. What's happening guys, Jared Bronstein here, and as always, we got some common replies and bloopers following our top 10 list. And before we get into this one, I gotta give a quick shout out to Top 10 Central. It's a hilarious new channel with amazing hosts, so click right over here and make sure to subscribe Subscribe. And now let's get into it. So starting us off at number 10, they need to perform through injuries. I'm not talking about a broken finger or even a little cold, if you'd consider that an injury. No, we're talking very serious injuries, such as sprained ankles and possibly even neck or spine injuries. More specifically, Gay Young from the band Stellar was seen wearing a neck brace while performing at the 2016 DMC Festival. Another incident is when Jungkook from BTS was performing Blood, Sweat and Tears with his group and accidentally cut his hand. Although blood was visibly coming down, he kept performing like the pro he is. I feel any other artist would just straight up be like, hold on guys, I cut my hand, I'll be right back. But Guess in K-pop that's that's not allowed. I don't know. At number nine, weight checks. <laughs> as crazy as it sounds, some of the performers get their weight checked on a regular basis. That is to ensure the stars or performers are staying within a certain weight, which I think is just ridiculous. Well, on the show Follow Me 8, Jung Cheyeon revealed that there is a standard she needs to keep her weight at. She explained if she goes over the weight, she is told by the higher ups to lose weight, which she immediately replies, I will. Now, I find this one kind of ridiculous. I understand image is important, but aren't we past this idea that you need to look a certain way to be successful? Speaking of looking in a certain way, in a number eight, we got plastic surgery. I was very satisfied and happy with my previous eyes. And my friends also told me that I looked okay without double eyelids. But I decided to have plastic surgery to promote our new song. Now I've read a few articles that vary in what they say, but one thing is for sure, plastic surgery in this industry is very normal. Some claim that the stars are pressured into getting some work done, usually on their nose, eyes or lips, while others claim they are forced into it. Either way, some idols, as K-pop stars are referred to, have admitted that they were pressured into a nose job by their management. More specifically, Huang Chi Yul said, I didn't really have thoughts of plastic surgery, but before my debut, my management company said that we should do it, so I agreed. Another artist, Shin Dong from Super Junior said, One day the president of our agency suggested I should have double eyelid surgery because I have an unpleasant look in my eyes, so I decided to follow his suggestion. It's kind of rude, but I guess it's part of the industry. I don't know. At number seven, we got discrimination. So, me, the Canadian Korean singer, shared her experiences on being discriminated against, stating that she had been called a mutt and a crossbreed. I was bullied. Although K pop is quite literally taking over the world, it seems the market and industry will treat you differently depending where you're from. Prince Mac, a Chinese Australian idol, said, As a foreigner in Korea, it was actually quite hard. Korea is actually very foreign friendly, but in the industry, it's not very foreign friendly. They won't forgive you for not speaking good Korean. They think if you're working in Korea, if you're in the K-pop industry, you have to speak good Korean. I mean, that makes sense considering how, you know, that's where the heart of the industry is. But there have been other incidents, such as British Korean singer Shannon, who said she got backlash after performing the Korean National Anthem at a baseball game. She explained, my mother is Korean and it shouldn't matter because I have Korean blood in me. But they kept calling me a foreigner. They wrote negative comments about me. That I think is insane. Like, who cares? It's, it like, doesn't matter. If they make the music, they make the music. Why do you care where they're from? And at number six, they get sexually exploited. The singer was charged in February with illegal activities, including organizing prostitution and drug use in the club he co-owns, the Burning Sun. In the industry, it's called the sponsorship, but unfortunately, it pretty much means they're pimped out. According to the website Soul Beats, sponsorship is the dirty, barely kept secret of the Korean entertainment industry. Every entertainment industry has some form of the casting couch, yes, but there are a few that come close to the systematic way that it is present in South Korea. It is not only present, but it is easily available with organizations and clubs dedicated to using low ranked and rookie celebrities and delivering them to wealthy and important men. These men would then sponsor the celebrity, giving her design and expensive stuff and would help her get roles and commercials in return for one little thing. I think you guys know what that is, doing the dirty. Which also makes me wonder, because it says gets her 
special and expensive things. Is it only happening to the females in the industry or maybe some guys as well? Probably more predominantly with females, which I find disgusting. I mean, it shouldn't happen at all to anyone, but anyways. At number five, they get blackmailed. More specifically, if they try to break their contracts, the higher ups will blackmail them to make sure they don't. A specific case of this was when Bake G Young's manager threatened to release a video of Bake doing the dirty when she wanted to change contracts. Unfortunately, when Bake called him on his bluff, he was for real and released the video online. He then fled to the US when she tried to sue him. However, he was apprehended and charged. Bake claims the incident almost ruined her career, forcing her to take years off before making a return to the music game. In a number four, extreme diets. <laughs> As you know, they need to achieve a certain weight, and one of the many ways this is done is by having the stars go on extreme diets. Some have been known to do the paper cup diet, which means they eat nine paper cups worth of food per day. The contents of the cup can vary from fruit to grains to rice, really anything that isn't going to make you gain a ton of weight. So, no really added sugar, anything. Other artists are known to go on food specific diets, such as the banana or cucumber diet, where they quite literally only eat that one food item, which is insanely non nutritional or unnutrition ish. Mm. All right, I'm just gonna go on to the next one for now. At number three, they can't have relationships. The rules of these contracts go far beyond things like performances or training schedules. And one of the most important rules they have to follow is no dating whatsoever. K-pop fans are known to be quite diehard. They legitimately fall in love with their favorite stars. So the idea of the performer being in relationships is a big no-no. To maintain the public image and that connection that the K-pop stars have with their fans, they're told not to have public romantic relationships with other stars or people in general. I mean, how awful is that? You're one of the biggest stars in the world, but you can't be seen in public with your significant other? That's kind of dumb. At number two, we got slave contracts. A uh, slave contract is usually about 10 to 15 years average. They have terms like no dating, dieting, some even have like plastic surgery. Relating back to the blackmailing number, K-pop stars are known to sign what's called a slave contract. These contracts are known to last from seven to 15 years and only begin when an artist makes a debut. So what does that mean? Well, let's say an agency picks up an artist, they then have to go through a a rigorous boot camp, which includes dancing, singing, and overall morphing the performer into a star. This can take up to 10 years and cost a lot of money, which usually comes out of the performer's pocket. When they make their official debut, the long-term contract then officially begins, and the stars usually won't see any money until they're at least halfway through their contract. So they're putting a lot of time, effort, sweat, tears, money into this career, and they might not see any money for another 10 or 15 years. In a number one, they're worked to death, sometimes quite literally. Former K-pop band member Gu Hara was found dead in her home in Seoul, South Korea. She was 28 years old, a former member of the K-pop group Kara. There have been countless videos of performers fainting on stage while performing. This could be due to their extreme diets, the stress of being the level of stardom they're at with all those pressures, or the fact that some of them work 20-hour days. Prince Mac explained, I've worked 20-hour shifts. I was shooting a variety TV show and that went on for 20 hours. No joke. Every day we average about 3 to 4 hours sleep. Apart from that, it's all training or work. Other stars have actually taken their own lives after the traumatic experiences they've dealt with at the hands of management. So, as you guys can see, the K-pop industry actually does have some pretty shady stuff going on. And there you guys have it for the top 10 shocking truths about K-pop you won't believe. I've never been a fan of K-pop, but after doing this list, it seems like a really shady industry. People are literally being pushed to extremes that are harming their health, and I don't want to support that by any means. If you are a K-pop fan, let me know in the comments down below which group or performer is your favorite. For now, let's reply to some comments, and then we got some bloopers you won't want to miss. So in the video top 10 insane YouTuber feuds you didn't know were fake, Joel Angel said, Jared, you had an under eye bags really showing today. Maybe use concealer so you don't look tired <laughs> my thoughts exactly yeah like I was tired I went to bed late the night before I don't know how to use makeup so not gonna happen sorry bud but appreciate the attention to detail Nana Tamwani Mwanza said where did Jared's beard go I had to shave for a production which you guys might actually see at some point it's a commercial for the internet in Canada some of you won't see it I don't know Pac Mac do said give me a shout out for no reason I'm new you just got your shout out bro Simple as that, you gotta just leave us a comment. And that's it, you'll get your shout out. You'll get some internet clout. Anyways guys, that does it for this one. I've been your host, Jared Bronstein. Make sure to subscribe, share this video with a K-pop fan, and let us know in the comments down below if you guys want a part two. And give this video a thumbs up if you guys like K-pop, or if you don't, still give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you in the next one. Oh, okay. I had so much like spit in my mouth that I was like talking, and I was like, I gotta swallow. I was like, I gotta swallow it. I gotta swallow my spit. Oh, if you guys make that dirty, I'll kill you. I just wanted to include that little tip there. A little improv. Yeah, where we at though? Okay, we're halfway through. She'll, she'll be fine. <laughs> how, how are these people like it if they had someone telling, oh, I'm sorry, you look like s? <laughs> <laughs> Do you mind putting on some concealer?
<laughs> you look fucking tired, bro. I'm offended. Like, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I ain't good, like, so it's kind of funny. This like, motherfucker is probably sitting at home in sweatpants. <laughs> like, eating Cheetos. <laughs> Nana Temwani Mwanza. Nana Temwani. Nana Temwani. Ah, oh, Nana Temwani Mwanza. <laughs>